Okay, everybody, I'd like to welcome everybody here at 6 o'clock, so we're going to get started uh, with the public hearing. Um, I'll open it. Uh, give you guys a little bit of background on a public hearing. Um, this is a, a hearing where the public obviously gets to stand up and talk. Uh, not necessarily uh, a hearing where the, the board uh, responds, but we, we could do that. Um, so obviously there's a lot of people here, and um, in an effort to get everybody home in a timely manner, let's you know keep our comments down to a couple of minutes apiece. So uh, the public hearing is open, and you guys for the for the calendar. This is for the calendar. So you guys, uh, whoever wants to start, go ahead and start. At the a week ago Monday, we were in a small gym in Lakeview, and. Jay Stoltenberg was there, Chris, you were there, and Lisa was there. And basically at the end of that meeting, when we were talking about a four-day work week, or school week, uh, Mr. Feeney, and you can read, I don't want to put words in your mouth, because it's on Chris, or uh, he's got it on tape, and, but basically this wasn't even going to be proposed to the school board this year. And 90% of the questions that were asked was, uh, answered by uh, we're not ready or we don't have the answers to that yet or we're working on it and I wonder how we got ready so fast I guess I would respond if that's okay to that particular question Gina. I'm not sure what you're referring to or trying to insinuate with your comment other than the fact what I said uh, at least from my recollection is that we would look at some kind of combination calendar the calendars you have before you are not four day week calendars they are combination calendars which is exactly what I said I would do. Mr. Chair I know most of you and you know me and <clears throat> I'm a dad and I got some comments here and then when I get finished you can ask me any questions as a dad, a grandfather, a substitute bus driver, a taxpayer, and a lifetime resident of the Sac School District, I feel that the four-day <clears throat> school week may, may not benefit the students. First and foremost, we need to look the effect of the four-day week will have on the students, approximately 60% of the students of East Sac County School District ride the bus to and from school. <coughs> right now the routes begin at 645 and at 430 or later. We have students that fall asleep by the time they reach school at 755. Some of these students <coughs> then have another 10 to 15 minute ride to their classrooms. The evening routes begin at 325 and end at 4.30 or later, and some students once again fall asleep by the time they reach their homes. If you change to the four-day school week, the routes will be start earlier, finish later. How will this benefit the students? There will be more stress placed on the students and the parent. <clears throat> what are what I am hearing in the community is that there will be more parents who are looking for open enrollment and moving their children to other schools, such as Kemper and other local schools. This may be as high as 20%, but because it could be also hearsay, I use 10%. This equals approximately 70 students or more. Can our school district afford to lose the state funds for this number of students? We could also lose students like the schools in Illinois and the state of Washington that have gone to four day. They have found that students that are having academic problems go out and find a part time job to fill the extra time out of school. And because of the because of these students have are struggling in school by <clears throat> school they will end up dropping out of school for full-time job do we really want a dropout in East Sac County another concern I have is 
the younger students want to participate in a athletics, how will it affect scheduling the games to compete in, with the other schools a five-day school week? Our students will be required to stay in class longer, which will result in having scheduled practice and games later. Whether will the other schools really want to adjust their schedules for us? The four-day schedule school week will require parents to find daycare for the fifth day of not working, and we are there enough quality daycare facilities to handle this. I feel that the decision to go to a four-day school week should be brought to a public vote so the school board knows what the parents of the students want. I haven't attended a lot of meetings, but I, after reading the paper, I wanted to put my thoughts into words. Is there any questions or? Well, a couple of things that I would comment on, uh, Bill, and thank you, that was very well written. Uh, but you were, you were talking about lengthening the, the school day to where it's going to, it's going to cause problems with sports. And what we've done are the calendars that are here are lengthening the day by 10 minutes at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's not. That's just one of the answers. I don't. I don't feel like that's going to cause too much trouble with another school district as far as sports go. Well, I didn't know. I just bring my personal comments. No, and I, I, I understand that, and I, you know, that's one that I wanted to respond to. Also, uh, some of the people handed me a letter here that <coughs> we would like to see a calendar comparable for this year as well. Instead of a late start, early outs on Wednesday. No junior high practice or high school practice. Is there a possibility that that calendar could be seen? I'm not sure I followed what you said, Bill. Would you say it again? Wednesday early outs. When we, if when we do go the four week, four days, will that uh, what the what you have in here for time? Is that what it will be? I thought the day would be extended like forty five minutes if we go into the four day week. And, and that's you know that's part of the thing that we want to talk about here is, is we've got some people still calling this a four day school week, and it's it's really not a four day school week. Uh, I mean, there are some weeks that have four days in them, but there are four-day school weeks in the calendar that we have today. I understand that, but so, this is looking for Mr. Speedy into the future. He would like us to go to the four-day uh, calendar. Isn't that correct? That's what our, our reading was the last time, is to look forward to a four-day week. I think let's backtrack a little bit. I understand what you're saying, and thank you. Um, if you go back to the discussion, <laughs> I think where this went off the rails, and I'll accept that responsibility, is that as a calendar committee, we looked at what do we want to accomplish with the schedule, and we came up with the two things we really wanted to accomplish. And one was to minimize disruptions with early outs and late starts, and while still, second point, maintaining uh, support for professional development and professional learning communities. One of the options that we researched that, that that does that is the four day week. And where we where this went off the rails is that the assumption is, is um, that's where this is headed. Uh, and I understand why that's the assumption, but that never really was, that was a strategy, that was one of the ways of dealing with it. After the public forums and stuff where we've tried to be as open as possible, um, that there are some issues with a four day week that we're not ready to answer. And, and so we backed away from any discussion of a full four day week <coughs> 
since the second, well, before the second public forum and put all of our time and efforts into what we, we, I call a hybrid or a combination calendar, which is what we're presenting, which accomplishes those two goals. But at this point, have we had discussions that this is going to end up in a four-day week? We really haven't at this point. You know, I can't foresee into the future, but to make the statement that I want a four-day week wouldn't be accurate. I want the schedule, the calendar, uh, to accommodate teaching and learning to the best possible way, whatever that looks like. And I have no preset notion that I want a four-day week. That's just not accurate. Okay? I'll assume what you're saying is true. I'm just saying people in the community feel that this is just a step to go into a four-day school week. I, I know what you just said, and I believe what you just said. I'm just telling you what the talk in the community is. They feel that this is just one step before we go there in the future. I think that if this works, we'll keep it. I think that's kind of what everybody's... I mean, there's not, I, I know that that's not been anything that I've talked about with anybody, just to assure, to assure you, and I'm not on the calendar committee, and I understand, once again, why everybody, I, I know why this is being talked about, and I know that it's a concern, and everybody thinks that this is just a way to get us there. I, I'm going to tell you that that's not what I've heard, and that's not what I've been a part of, just to somewhat reassure you. If this works, what do you mean if it works? If it works, we'd have no reason. The reason that we visited the calendar and redoing it is because this year is not working for lots of different reasons. But give me those reasons. I don't, a lot is not an answer. The disruptions, help me, what, what have you had reported? The uh, disruptions? The, well, from a teaching perspective, the choppiness of the day because of so many early outs and, and late starts. Uh, and again, if you go back, the philosophy you drives what you try to do in a calendar, our philosophy for this year's calendar uh, was to set up PLCs uh, for success. And it's worked very well for that, but it's, there's been some uh, issues. That's from a teaching perspective with all of the breaking up of the days and lack of continuity. And from a parent's perspective, I haven't heard from a ton, but I've heard from enough that the uh, 17 late starts that we have in are a real hardship with childcare and whatnot. So that's what led to what we're trying to do uh, is, is can we find a way to have un more interrupted, uninterrupted teaching time and, uh, and, and at the same time continue to, to work on the professional development PLCs. Hence, that's where we went to what things can we put into one full day uh, instead of, and then the other days when we're actually in session teaching, that's what we're doing is teaching. So that's the logic behind this. <coughs> Will it lead to a further discussion? The process is the same every year. We go and, and uh, we start talking about what do we want to accomplish, and then eventually it ends up here. Um, so is it going to lead to a four-day week? Uh, in my estimation, probably not. Does that mean it won't ever be talked about? I don't ever say never anymore. For all we know, it could go backwards. This could be something that... No, we, you know, we believe it's going to be better for teaching and learning. That's what's driving it. And what facts do you have to think that that's going to help the teaching and learning as far as they're going to improve our grades or reading proficiency or math proficiency? Well, what, what, Gene, what we know is that the, the two hour late starts aren't working as far as teaching goes. Because, I mean, you can, talk to, you can talk to many teachers, you can talk to parents, you can talk to watchdogs. Talk to a watchdog. Uh, who goes on a two-hour late start. They don't get anything done. The kids get into class, they get settled down, they've got five minutes to teach, and then they have to go to another class. So you feel that the four, if the combination or one of what, four days? It's an easy word to remember. What? A hybrid, that's what I meant. A four-day school week uh, is going to uh, improve our uh, education as far as reading no. and math? No, we don't think a four-day school week is going to be that. That's why we're not voting on a four-day school week. A hybrid calendar, th you think that's going to improve our math or reading? That would be our hope, yes. And do you have any facts to back that up as far as another school that has gone to that, that it improved their reading or math? Do I have what other schools have done? I don't. If you're referencing the fact that somebody's been circulating that Waco's 
test scores are down low. We haven't looked at any of that. You know, what I do is I listen to teachers talk uh, about the frustrations of just getting started and then having a dismissal or uh, it's very difficult. They'll use the high school as an example uh, that you've got. Um, <coughs> You start two hours late and you end up with 25 minute class periods. You just get started and, you, and that's what we were trying to get away from. Do we know, I don't know much of anything as a definite, but common sense and 35 years of experience in the business tell me that if we can create time for teachers to teach and that's what the emphasis is on, that's better than anything that we currently have had. Kevin, go ahead. How do you describe being a morning for you or a day where we have a two-hour late start? The kids come in at 10.20, second hour. They are working on a unit where they need a computer. So they get out the computer and we wait for them to boot up. Three, four, five minutes pass and they get into a program that they need to be on. I describe what they need to do. Um, then they have to um, log out, they have to put the computers away. So in our 20 minute period, how much time do they actually get in with something that's really quality education? Then they move on to the next class, and the next class, and the next class. Your mornings are 20 minutes long, afternoons are 30 minutes long, so it's a little bit more time. Fifth hour is the entire 45 minutes. <coughs> On late start days, which this year we've had because of heat, because of snow days, and because of PLCs, I'm not sure how many we've had, but it seems like we've had 87 of them. That's my favorite number. It seems like we don't get anything done. In my college class for comp, we are so far behind, it's not even fun. And I can't tell the kids to go ahead and research on their own and to do whatever on their own because I have to explain to them what they need to do. Uh, you know, I guess I'd have... Go ahead, John. I'd have a question. It sounds like the, uh, those late starts weren't thought out very well before we jumped in. But I we mean, didn't know well, excuse how... Me, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, you know, you, know, that they, you know, that they weren't thought out very well. And that's what just wanted to make sure that everything is thought out well. You know, uh, uh, 20 minute class. I agree. That that'd be bad. But but nothing says you have to do all eight periods in a in a day. You could do five of them today, and and the next time do five different ones. You know, you you don't have to do do them like that. I mean, that's uh, um, I guess that's uh, there's other ways to fix the problem. I realize there's a problem. You know, there's other ways to fix it. Um, and like I said, I just hope that it's thought out. And and uh, you know, one of the board members said that. Uh, <coughs> So about if it works, you know, it was, and then, uh, you know, how are we going to know it's successful? Because I know uh, Dr. Green talked about some things that weren't working with today. How are we going to know it's successful? What, what's it, what's it going to what's it going to look like besides teacher says? You know, I, and I think that's what the, the community like to know. You know, the uh, you know, we just hope the test scores don't go down. Is what what I kind of heard. I mean, I haven't, you know, I mean that's what I've heard. You know, we, we we hope it maintains, and you know, I, and uh, you know, to, to me, that's uh, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of like an experiment. You know, I think we need to know what it's what success is going to look like, and I let you answer that. In my perspective, there's there's a couple things there, John, and, and very articulate mm -hmm. points. Thank you. Um, one is is. Uh, some of it has to be anecdotal for the people that are coming from the trenches that are with the kids. We've only talked about high school, talk to the elementary, what, it, what the two hour late starts mm -hmm. and stuff <coughs> have to do. It, it's more than just a, a high school issue. And back to what Jean had said earlier, my, my hope uh, and what we'll, we'll monitor is uh, do we see some results? And right now the best measure, even though it's not necessarily a great measure, uh, would be the test scores. You know, and so that's that we can look at. And do I think that this calendar that's being proposed is a panacea? That there is no such thing. Do I think it, with my professional experience, um, believe that it sets the table for for a higher quality of teaching time? The answer is yes. And we have to see at the end and <coughs> compare what data is available. John, that's the best I can answer. John, you talked a little. Sorry, uh, John, you talked a little bit about uh, 
how you understand that 20 minute classes aren't ideal, let's say. So would you say that a full instructional day is better than a partial instructional day? Depends on that pool. How, describe a par the partial instructional day as we have it today uh, with 20 minute classes. Yes, a full instructional day is better than the 20 minute classes. Correct. I would I would agree with that 100%. Okay. So, but you know that. Uh, the, but I'm wondering if there's something in between. Is what my question was. Well, I, I'll just throw this out. In 2013, 2014, the year that we're in right now. We have 153 full instructional days, and that's just built into the calendar. That's not like like Tammy was talking about. Our late starts due to weather and heat. In the 20 in the 2014-15 calendar that is being proposed right now, there's either 166 or 168 full days. That's 15 more days. Instructional hours go up too. Yeah, but 15 more days. 15 more days, yeah, okay. A full, full instructional days. Mm -hmm. The other thing too that everybody, if you haven't seen the comparison, is that right now we've calculated uh, actual instructional hours, which takes out the two hour late starts and the time that's lost from instruction. This year is at 11, will be at 1109. And keep in mind that doesn't, in, uh, that doesn't include the weather related. That's mother nature and we have to try to couple of that. Um, the draft X4 calendar that uh, is, is being uh, considered moves that up to 1132. So we've actually added uh, about three or four days of instruction with the kids, instructional time with this calendar. And that's what we were trying to do. So back to measuring and, and hope. Um, the more time that our teachers are with our kids, the better opportunity we have for learning. And uh, okay. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Say, Chris. I guess I just want to say this is a little bit more encouraging to me than what was initially posted um, or spoke about at the forum with the 40 minute extension. 10 to 15 minutes is a little bit better. Um, but that being said, I guess um, I have a few questions. With um, days that they're not having school, are they going to have sports practice? One. Two. Um, I know one of the big complaints was the inconsistency with. Um, when the late starts were just first glance at the calendar that doesn't look like there's any consistency on the first <coughs> Monday of the month third Monday of the month any sort of that um, is there a reason for that or was there is there is that um, your, fir your first question as far as athletic practices um, still being talked about but my opinion and that's not gospel is that yeah there would still be athletic practices at least at high school level and you also at the middle school level have we, we've got some things to figure out there for sure um, the, the reason those the days are where they are is that we tried to coordinate a couple of things with where those days are uh, one is that we're part of what's called the Southwest Consortium which is 10 or 11 schools that we try to have consistent days uh, to where we can do cooperative uh, professional development. So those are built into the calendar and, and there's no rhyme or reason. It's matching up 10 or 11 different school districts. Um, and then with continuity of, of uh, professional learning communities, um, what we have been told by the person that we, uh, Daniel Venables, that, that we've gone through the training with PLCs is that uh, going two hours every two weeks is about as long as you should go before that group meets. So we tried to place those and now you can also add in the ending of the quarter uh, for where we're going to move professional or uh, move parent-teacher conferences to two consecutive Mondays so we don't have the early outs for those. So there isn't continuity but they're all placed there for a particular reason, if that makes sense. I guess that being said, I you know, I appreciate that you've looked in a little closer um, and not jumping jump into anything so extreme. Right. But that being said, there really is lack of evidence-based peer review research stating any sort of longer day um, and four day a week uh, does any benefit for the actual education. I'd like to, uh, my largest <laughs> concern is uh, the child, child care, the meals, and at risk. Um, uh, my wife and I, uh, I, 
we've had 30 plus kids go through here in the last 25 years. Uh, we've had, I think, about 10 graduate. Um, so, uh, and, and what I want to talk about is, uh, you know, the adequate child care is that I don't know that uh, there's adequate licensed daycares to handle the children, and I would hope those children would be placed in daycares rather than taking care of themselves on those days off, you know, I, I would hope. And I know that it's not your responsibility to raise kids, but 50 years ago, you took that responsibility on when you had 180 school days. You know, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like we're giving that responsibility back. Um, also is, is the meals. For some of those kids, the best meal they get is breakfast and, and, and lunch. And uh, taking one more, taking a day's worth of meals away from home, you know, that, that, that concerns me. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I know that uh, uh, we'd, uh, you know, when I was working with wrestling, we'd have kids, I'd say, pack a lunch for mommy, and they'd say, there's nothing there. And I'd take them home, and he's right, there was nothing there. You know, to pack a lunch for themselves for tomorrow. But I said my specific area of concern is the at-risk kid, because, the, you know, uh, we, we deal with a lot of those at-risk kids, and, the, and there's other at-risk kids here in the community as well. And, uh, and they just need that structure, and you know that those uh, that that uh, having a, that time off uh, just allows them another chance to get in trouble, and and you know we can try to keep those reins as tight as we can. But it's kind of like my grandfather used to say when you know when you took the harnesses off the, the horses and turned them out, they all kicked up their heels, and that's kind of what that happens with the boys. I think sometimes at the Smith House when we you know get out of that day uh, time off. Um, and I, I can't agree that this calendar this year just really hasn't worked out the best. You know, and, and like I said, that you know, uh, there was another calendar committee that met last year and presented this grand idea this year. And I don't, and I'm sure, you know, I don't know if anybody uh, asked questions or what, but uh, I, I kind of looked at the, the calendar and, and this week will be the first, I call it full week, since the first week in December. And you know that's that's a long time, and then and then we look at some other things too. Is that like I noticed that on the 21st of April we we have the day off. I think it's Easter Monday, and then the next day they have a late start for the PLCs or whatever it is. And, you know, it's just that so you know some of that continuity. Uh, you know, I, I guess we didn't look at it hard enough last year. You know, we all have that 2020 hindsight, and uh, I think that'd be good. Um, I'm curious if, if there's anything looked at about uh, what we could provide to those kids on the day off. And by the kids on the day off, I mean uh, if, if we're going to go to having, you know, uh, some, some, that hybrid schedule with, with, uh, with uh, occasional Mondays off, um, if there's ever, if there's been any thought given what we could do, not only just for the kids that uh, need some little support, but the kids maybe that are excelling and get a chance to further excel. Um, I'm also curious why 15 minutes was added to the school day. You know, to me, 15 minutes is, is nothing. I mean, that's uh, in an eight period day, that's just two more minutes in an eight period day. But if you look at that another way, what has happened by adding that 15 minutes a day, actually you've added 45 hours to the year, 40 plus hours to the year, which is the equivalent of seven days. So by putting 15 minutes on a day, you're able to take seven days off the year. And to me, I would rather have my child in class for one whole class period seven times than two minutes a day. And, and, and that's uh, uh, where I'm at. So um, thanks for letting me speak, and, and uh, I'd uh, appreciate you know, your time. Thanks. <clears throat> I'm just curious on those four day weeks. Are we omitting some classes or what is that? <coughs> what are the classes going to be on those four days? Are we going to do away with gym, band, choir, or are we sticking to the math? How is that week looking? The plan would be is that it's a regular schedule, uh, like, like a regular school day because 
So everything it will is. be in that week that they normally get on the five, except it's going to be the hitch. The hitch and the get along would be the specials at the elementary, and what we've started talking about is going to a six-day cycle, so that it's not the same class. That's another thing we learned this year is that uh, the same class or the same special gets bombarded each time, and we've got a couple people here, and that's an issue. So what we're looking at is a six-day cycle, so that would be rotated through to try to accommodate it. The school day would be a school day. <clears throat> sure. Why don't you just make it simple and go to an early dismissal every Wednesday? Why don't you drop a whole new calendar of an early dismissal every Wednesday? I can respond from my opinion. Um, one of the things, again, going back to that we wanted to minimize was uh, the disruption to the regular school day. And as good an idea as that is, and it probably works well in places, and maybe it would work well here, it didn't point us in the direction of having, when we're there to teach, it's there to teach. Now we have an early out every week of the school year. And that was not what we were trying to accomplish with the calendar. That's why I haven't spent any time with that. Okay, so when do you feel the kids are at their prime of learning? <clears throat> Depending on age. What time of day? Uh, morning. Okay. So, no more early out, or no more late starts. One early dismissal. The kids are, that's a, that's a regular schedule. Kids are based on routine. Correct? Oh, certainly. So, why not try that? Again, my, my comment is it's the same answer that I gave just a little bit. Because to me, these extra 15 minutes or whatever you want to add to the school day is just more time for a movie. I, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. So you don't have an answer. I answered the question before, but you didn't like the answer. No, you didn't. There's a lot of people that don't. It's more free time. So you're saying our teachers just put in a movie? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I just spent the last two weekends. Carol's. Oh, go ahead, Carol. <laughs> How many of the non-student work days are required by the state? I didn't hear that, Carol. I'm sorry. How many what? How many of the non-student work days are required by the state? If you're talking about like professional development, the state has not enforced at one time they passed some uh, legislation. I think it's three or four years ago, but don't quote me that it was uh, uh, they had to have ten professional development days, but that has not been on the books or enforced. It really is a local decision, is what I was told when I asked that question. <coughs> So then why do we need so many? Maybe the best thing, um, and I, I tried to, to put some stuff out about professional development uh, and how that has evolved. Um, teaching is a profession, and there are all kinds of things that uh, are changing or need to change in education. And the reason that we're trying to change that paradigm is to provide quality time for that. And maybe the best example that I could come up with, and maybe it's not even a good example, but off the top of my head, uh, would be is, is um, my, my wife is a nurse, for instance, and there's a certain amount of things that she has to go through or she gets to go through to stay up to date. And I want to go to a medical professional that, that does that and is staying current and is changing with the time. And, Again, maybe that's not a good connection, but that's how I look at it. And there's a difference between um, if it's just just a, a teacher work day where they're just catching up on stuff, I'm adamantly opposed to that. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, providing uh, quality of learning to continue uh, growing teachers as a profession. I think I've talked to several of you school board members or about this <coughs> earlier. Um, I'm going to have to agree with what John says. If we add 15 minutes to a class, today, that's two minutes per class that a kid goes. 
And in my opinion, if you have two minutes to a class, nothing's going to be taught more in that class in those two minutes than what was taught in two minutes less. So to add minutes to a school day or to a length of a school calendar or is not going to make any difference. Um, the other thing is the at-risk kids, like John says. When it comes to kids having a day off, trust me, some of these kids are going to find, a, find time to goof off, not do homework. They're going to get in trouble. So I agree with, totally with John on that point. The other thing is I was just doing simple math, and I was looking at this class schedule that we have here, or the calendar schedule that we had this year. Yeah, it don't make any sense, two, two hour late starts. Um, I got that loud and clear from the teachers here saying two hours late starts are disruptive to the classroom. But I think there's other alternatives to doing two hour late starts, and I, I'm just going to do simple math. We had 17 late starts, two hours late starts. So that's 34 hours. Looks like this last year we had five uh, in teacher service days, so full days off. That's 35 hours. So add the two together, that's 69 hours. Seven hour days, that gives us 10 hours of teacher and service days. And we're looking at here somewhere between 14 to 16 in service days during the school day. Why are we, why are we looking at that, adding extra classrooms times versus why don't we just look at those 10 days? Maybe we should do some before school starts, maybe we should do some on Saturdays. And I guess the last point I got is if anybody's been in the retail business or any kind of business, I'd like to know how many businesses can work on a four day work, work day versus a five day work week or a six day work week. I guess I'm in retail and if I gotta work six days or seven days a week, I work it. And I don't know why the teachers or the school system should be any different. The only thing I would even comment on Doug, and thank you for your comment. <coughs> Would be is that uh, if you're interpreting that on the, a four-day work week is that uh, people aren't doing anything on that fifth day, that that wouldn't be accurate. If it was a day off, absolutely, I understand what you're saying. Uh, but on the days where we have professional development, um, that's a non-instructional day, but it's still very much a professional work day. I, I guess my opinion there is more days of exposure equals better learning by the kid versus hours of learning. Understood. That's my, my gist of it. Understood. And if, if, if the school system was set up for it, a year-round calendar would probably be the best school system there would be, but I know our schools aren't set up for that. And so we're going to less, so I don't understand that either. So. <laughs> probably at risk of opening the school, so I'll apologize in advance, but I'm a nurse as well, and I'm sure your wife doesn't get 17 paid days away from her job to do professional development, and I would say as a nurse, the professional development time is just as important. Okay, do you, do you coach any extracurricular activities? Do you coach any curricular activity? No. Thank you. I just spent the last two weekends in my recliner on Friday and Saturday night watching the Iowa Girls Athletic Association state tournaments and the Boys Athletic Association state tournaments. And I watched Farm Bureau give scholarships and praise for uh, kids that are that athletes being better students, better all-around students. Uh, and I'm really concerned. I don't see a lot of coaches here. Smith was the only one, only coach here that I've seen, but I have talked to some other people, and I'm not going to mention any of their names. Jay was present when I talked to one of them, but I'm not, still not going to mention any names. But I've talked, when you say teachers, I've talked to other <coughs> teachers, and basically that are coaching an extracurricular activity. They're not for this. So when you say teachers, uh, I don't think you can include all the teachers that are under your staff. I'm just looking at the, you know, at both schedules, and again, I just, I have a little boy who asks me every day, do I have school tomorrow? Do I have school tomorrow? And so this is going to be so much more confusing for him than, I, than on a Sunday I can say, to me, tomorrow's Monday. You got you. You have school tomorrow. Now I say, oh no, nope, let's look at the calendar because I don't know if you. You know, it's it's going to be a lot more confusing for him. Um, it's. I mean, I'm, and you can. 
you can sit there and, and you know, do your eyebrows, but you don't get it. <laughs> I'm trying to listen now. <laughs> he, this isn't constant. Consistency. Yeah, you, you need consistency, and this is not. And it's going to be so much harder for him and I know I'm not the only parent with a special needs child, but I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a whole bunch more questions because he's not going to know when he's going to school and when he's not. And now, at least on a two-hour late start, he knows when he's going. Or if he gets out early, yeah, he's thrilled to death. Again, you know, like any kid would be. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, so next week I have to tell him, no, you don't have school. The week after you do. The, I mean, it, it, there's, it's doesn't even make sense. Rhonda, how do you handle the two-hour late starts? He, he loves the two-hour late starts. But I mean, how do you handle that? I mean, obviously. But he, he, knows he, that. He, he, but he knows he still has to go. That's the thing. This, when you're looking at it, it's like, okay, this week he has it, next week he doesn't, this week he does. The two-hour late starts, I mean, he knows he has to go to school. It, it just, like, come Sunday, I can say, no, Timmy, today is Sunday, you, you know, and then he knows the rest of the week that he's going to, what his schedule is. This, I can say, no, t today's Monday, but you're not going to have school today. You know, it, it, to, in Timmy's mind, it's not going to make a lot of sense. And I, I would guess that's going to be for a lot of kids, really, because they're going to have to look at a schedule every, every week and see, okay, yeah, we have school, we don't have school. I just have one say, thing to say, and if we're going to have less days, that means less hours for the bus drivers, for the cooks, for the aides, are we going to be able to keep the bus drivers, the cooks, the aides, if they're making a fifth less, and maybe unless the teachers are all going to take a fifth of their wages, so that, you know, like the bus drivers and the janitors and everybody that, you know, is taking a pay cut, are you guys going to too so that it affects everybody the same? <laughs> we realized that if you do the math, we had 178 teaching days this year, and the calendar is, that is there is 168. We're talking 10 days difference. It is, I understand what you're saying, but the notion that it's a fifth was, goes back to the four-day discussion. We're talking 10, 10 days is what the, the numbers are. I know, but on the two-hour lakes, they at least still get to drive, they still get to cook, they still get to do their aiding. I understand. Yeah, you know, I I'm just saying, we might lose teachers' aides and bus drivers. We have an X3 and X4 calendar in our hands. They're very similar. Are you promoting one over the other? Anyway, the board. I don't, I don't think anybody on the board is happy with X3 from my conversation. So that would lead me to believe that you are supporting and promoting X4. I would say that if a calendar gets approved, it would be X4. Now we've had nearly 45 minutes of discussion here. Uh, are you going to decide this issue this evening? Does it need to be decided at this board meeting? And after all this discussion, are you prepared to make that decision this evening? No, we, we've actually been discussing this for several months. Um, and I don't know if any of you have been at the forums, but I'm sure you guys have. We had two forums back in January. Uh, Thanks. February. 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 Thank you. So, I didn't attend the sign. So uh, I'm prepared to uh, to approve a calendar tonight. I don't. I can't speak for the rest of the board. Well, I won't talk. I'll just give you some facts, and if you're ready to do that, and this is the Waco thing that Mr. Feeney alluded to, and this is facts. I didn't collect these facts, but this is facts. Fourth grade, uh, fourth grade reading. Right now, East Sac is 80th. Waco, who is on a four-day 
school week is 288. Eighth grade reading. East Sac is 223rd in the state. Waco, who is uh, on a four day school week, is 300. And in math, our eighth grade reading, East Sac is 232 in the state. Waco, who is on a four day work, uh, school week, is, uh, is 301st. <coughs> those are facts I'd like for you, all your school boards, to look at those before you do any voting. Gene, can I ask you a question? What year are those from? Wakos and ours. Just out of curiosity, what year are they from? I'm assuming they're the most current ones pot off the website. It says 12, 12, 13. I would say, because we haven't taken ours this year, and I don't know if that's theirs from this year, <coughs> which is the first year they went to four days. I believe so. <coughs> In every case, they are way below us. I think what, what Teresa's is saying, Gene, is that I might have... We haven't talked to Waco for months, so I don't know what they're doing, but my understanding <coughs> is that this year is the first year that they've been on a four-day week. So those numbers come from before they went to the four-day week is what I'm saying. And I don't know that for a fact. I, I, I don't either. I, didn't, I did not collect the data. It was handed to me. Understood. Can I just say one thing? I can, can I say one thing? Yeah, I was, I've been doing some reading on it just to confirm my data to get up my own kids. When I got to reading, I found on the um, a web or a news article where they said 90% of the kids that got the opportunity to come in on that fifth day that there was no school are there asking for more help. So How between, get there? well, I don't know, but there, there 90 percent of them are finding a way in, and that isn't going to be an option for the majority of our students. And then I look at this every other Monday of no school. And with a lot of the students I work with, that's one more day to find some law enforcement to help them out versus coming in and seeing us. And, and previous students we've seen, they, they'll tell you that we're the most accountable face that they see every single day. So for me, one more day that they're out there fighting that battle on their own is tough. So that's my concern. I, I think Waco does run a bus route on that Friday. They do. They, yeah, they do run a bus route and they collect the kids that want to come to school. 90% yeah, of Yeah, and then they, I, I think they have some method. I don't know how they feed them, but, but they do run a bus route. And they go for a half day and I'm going yeah, to long, well, long through the noon hour. Here yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know enough either. I just but, thought it was impressive that 90% of them didn't want that four days. They wanted to come to school that fifth day. So that's where I found it impressive. And, and some of, again, I'm going to long term, so we really haven't looked at Waco in months, but um, it was that the one that I brought up as an example, one of the things that they uh, were attempting to do was to do some remediation on that, that half day that they had on Friday for kids that needed it. And then they also were structuring a different type of curriculum as well that goes outside of the the, the regular core stuff, and I don't right. know the details, so I just it's not it exactly a, a straight school. I just found it interesting, though, that you have that 90% that says, cool. I don't want to be home today, I'm going to go to school. <coughs> I got a question, though. Um. Um, with professional development, Doug, is that um, stuff that you're doing on those, those mm -hmm. days, to me, some of it can be done at other times. I, I've never argued that. But some of it is as you're, as you're going through the, the concept-based teaching and learning and the different uh, technology things is that you want to be able to go directly back to your class and, and start implementing and, and fiddling with, with this new learning. <clears throat> some of that can be done and then uh, later, but not all of it can be in my opinion. Yep. You know, you say non-disruptive classes, and I, I understand that argument very, very well. I understand that. But I still... If a lesson is going to be taught in one day, whether it's a 45-minute lesson or a 50 or a 47-minute lesson, the lesson's still going to be the same. So my point is, more lessons is better than actual minutes or hours in a school year. Good point. Dr. Feeney, could you describe what a professional development day would look like? What they look like now, John? No, no. The calendar you're proposing, right. what it would look like. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, the first thing that we do is administratively sit down and, and, and look at the, the times that we have available, and then we would have a plan for the entire year. Included in those things would be uh, two hours for professional learning communities scheduled in a timely fashion. We'll start there. Uh, then we'll look at the work that we're doing with concept-based teaching and learning. Uh, and we've got elementary at, at uh, one place, middle school at another, and, and see where we're at in the continuum and plug those things in. Some of those would involve perhaps going with the consortium uh, for part of our staff. Other parts would be is that we're going to be in-house. We may bring people in to talk about that. It's collaborative work between teachers and developing the units uh, uh, and, and that type of thing. So, um, we haven't developed the full-blown professional development calendar until we know what time is, is really available. But we're on a, on a road with this district um, that, that will continue on. Now we fold in the technology needs, John, um, for uh, continued growth with, with going to the one-to-one -one tentatively at, at the high school level, the following year at the middle school level, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things get folded into this one umbrella of professional development. Yeah, I think that the, uh, as far as the community goes, is the pill that's <laughs> difficult to swallow is that uh, they're kind of buying an unknown. You know, there really hasn't been enough maybe community education you know, we, we don't know what's happening on those professional development days. You know, uh, we, we know, we kind of have an idea what's happening now, but we, we don't know what, what the plan would be. And, and you know, uh, I would, would think there would been, be some type of a, you know, a skeleton plan put together uh, because this has been on the drawing board for, you know, five months probably. Yeah. No, the, the, and, and the dates, maybe so. I didn't speak clearly. Would I say there's a skeleton plan? Yes. The emphasis next year uh, within our district, uh, for the last two years, we've really been focusing and articulating English and language arts. Math is, is next, uh, K through 12. And that's what the focus is. The specific pieces until we know where they are, I, I, I can't tell you that until we know what time is available. But for the next two years, the emphasis will be on implementing uh, developing concept-based units, et cetera, in uh, math uh, and implementing the I-4. That's what the focus of the work was done. And that has been a plan all along. Was, uh, ask one last question, then I'm going to button it. All right? <laughs> and that's a problem. All right? And how much you got bet on that, Graham? <laughs> uh, is, uh, was it ever discussed to slide your Tuesdays to Mondays? So, for example, right now, you know, they talk about they lack the continuation, you know, that, that, that Tuesday kind of breaks up the day. But was any thought given to having uh, the two-hour late start on Monday? You follow a similar calendar to what you had this year, but slide the two-hour late start to Monday instead of Tuesday, and then you get your four days of, of uh, you know, uninterrupted learning. And you know you, you were able to, to get your uh, um, professional development done as what you had planned to do this year because that would address the uninterrupted learning and and uh, it come closer to not having to look at the calendar and decide if you had school or not. So just just a question: Was that ever? Do you know if that was ever considered? Not to my knowledge, um, and primarily. And I, I did follow what you were saying there. Um, I can get kind of tricky to follow. <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> uh, primarily because I guess we go back to the driving force yeah, between yeah. Uh, what we were trying to accomplish. Even if it, it's on Monday, it's still a late start. Kids are out of that routine and, and it's a shorter day, etc. So, no, we really looked at how do we get rid of those and still, still do things. But are you saying then that, you know, no, what the late, we're never, in Iowa, we're never going to get away from late starts. You know, this past two months showed that. You know, uh, I'm not talking whether they're really no, talking plans. Right, I, I know, but still, the, the, the issue's still going to be there. Uh, but two, when you have that two or late start, it's still going to be there. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Thank you. I have one more thing, too, and then I'm done, too. But, um, we'll walk up together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my, I'm not disputing that professional development is, in, is not important. It most definitely is important. 
Um, what do other districts around us do? How many professional development days do they encompass in their year? And, and I don't know that I can answer that step because again, this is the first year that I'm, if you didn't have an, in, not this year, next year is the first year uh, that you could utilize hours uh, to create more time. Uh, and I don't know what the other districts, because it's the first time that we've had that flexibility to even have the discussion. Just in, to put things kind of in perspective, I'm a nurse practitioner, I'm point nine employee, 17 days of paid time away from my patients um, that 17 days plus the summer, basically, for continuing education is what I would say that they have available. But 17 days is more PTO than I have for the whole year. Um, <laughs> and that's when I am expected to do my continuing education. And I better know what I'm prescribing to my patients. <coughs> Thanks. It was brought up about a public vote on this why, why is it that being considered it's brought up early in the meeting about a uh, public vote again the board clearly the board makes that decision and i guess you can make it a public vote i've never heard of such a thing but i guess so how do, how do you possible how do you uh how do you get to something to vote on? When you when you have a vote, you, you either vote yes or you vote no on something, right? So do we have everybody out here put together their own calendar? I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious that we have several opinions here. Uh, it's pretty obvious that you got about 95% of them is one way and 5% the other way in this room. And this, it was the same way in Lakeview when I went to the forum in Lakeview. I guess my question too is that was discussed at your forums too, but uh, I said maybe we should get some of the public involved in these uh, committee meetings. And uh, did you get anybody involved? Did you get any parents involved? Did you get any preachers involved? I mean, as far as I know, it's still the same committee as it was. Yeah, you're right, Doug. It is still the same committee. Uh, you know, part of the problem is is when you do this. It doesn't matter how many people you have involved, somebody's not going to be asking about it. And I, and I understand there's, how many people are here tonight? 50, 60, 70? But how many people aren't here? Hundreds. Yeah. Right? Agreed. So there would be, there would be other people here that weren't happy if we did that. I mean, you know, I guess on the other thing is, when it comes to a few years ago, a new school, it, you know, Talking about a new school, it was more than just a committee of uh, teachers. I think it was the public involved in that, that, those decisions too back then. And and I, I see this no different. This this inf this affects our kids. This affects our <clears throat> teaching of the kids. And quite honestly, days is more important than hours or minutes. And I wish the state of Iowa would never done away done this hourly thing. I think it's wrong and you guys are approaching it wrong I think the R's thing is right because I I'll, I'll step back <laughs> <laughs> the hour thing is the, is the best way to handle it I, I believe because an hour is an hour a day is not a day well you know, people make you know like we've had three hour days and you can count it as a day and somebody else has an eight hour day and those are both the same day well, so I, hours yeah, but you still got to have hours and days, but I still think more days is better over the same amount of hours. I agree. Okay. Thank you, guys. We've been here for an hour. Uh, does anybody do want to speak? Anybody who hasn't asked a question or given a comment? Uh, Bill? I guess I would just say one thing. Um, I'm the oldest dog in town when it comes to the faculty. And... I kind of think of this as I do when I'm getting ready to plant seed corn. I'm not going to plant a different seed corn until I know doggone well it works. I'm not going to do anything in my farm business until I know it works. And if I'm, maybe I'm misstep, uh, stepping here, but it seems there isn't a whole lot of information out there. One school, uh, Waco, and I know that there are some other schools that some folks spoke of at the public meetings, 
but I would sure like to know that this is going to work before I step in. Um, and I'll do anything for kids. You know, I would love to see ESAC the best school in the state. And if you can show me hands down that this is a good policy and that it's going to work, I'm on board growing. But I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. And I'm not willing to gamble with my grandchildren. That's thank, thank you, Bill. That was well said. I, I, would ha I have a question to ask about um, who in here thinks that the calendar that we're doing right now is working? 13, 14? Yeah. No, no, 12, 13. The one that we're doing right now today. 13, 14. Yeah, 13, 14. Whatever, whatever year we're in. 13, 14. So nobody thinks that's working, right? We changed from last year to this year, right? So now we're trying to get it better. Okay? I think it's an interesting question to ask would be who thinks the calendar from the year prior was working? <laughs> well, in fairness, how many of this people how many people in this room think this calendar is gonna work? Let's ask that question. You're gonna ask that other question. I mean let's take a vote on every all of it. I got a question. When Crudoff was in uh, superintendent, I think they used to go back to full days back then for teacher and service. Is that correct? Well, John would probably be the best answer to that. John. Well, well, well Crudoff, when, when it was back then, it was full full days of school, <coughs> teacher and yep. service. Yep. Why did we go to this two days early? Why did we go to this system and now we don't like it? I don't know that that's really relevant. Right now. Well, it was full days back then, and full that's day. what we're trying to do, but we're just trying to add more full days. The answer is, the answer I made before, Doug, is that uh, this calendar for this year was designed for continuity of PLCs. <coughs> that's where the, the two-hour list starts coming from. Right, wrong, or indifferent, that's the answer. Dallas wanted to speak. I just was going to, the question was asked, who in this room thinks this is going to work? And I stood up because I think it's going to work. I think my class will be a better class next year because I will be a better teacher next year. I'm an, I'll consider myself an, almost an expert on fourth grade. And I think the more opportunity I get to work on very well prepared, planned lessons will make those two minutes every day more valuable to your kids. So what does that say you as a teacher right now? Yeah. yeah. What, what does, does that say? say? Yeah. That says that I'm willing to get better. That doesn't say I'm the best. It says I'm willing to get better. I know there's things out there that I can learn yeah. to make mm -hmm. myself a better person, a better teacher. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing, I want to do it. And I do. I'm, I'm sorry that's upsetting to some of you. And then when we say, we're only adding 15 minutes on, but when we thought about adding a half an hour on, that was way more than our kids could possibly handle. So now we, we're just gonna add these smaller bits of time because they're manageable to kids. I mean, I'm just, I just know that given more time, not time off, more time to work on better things for the students in my class. It'll make me a better teacher, and I know that for me. So, something to think about, I guess. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'll, I'll speak loud enough so everybody hear me. Um, how much time do you spend catching kids back up or reviewing with the kids, or is it necessary to review with the kids? when you have an extra length of time off to get them spun back up to so where you can hit the ground and pick off again? I spend five to 10 minutes reviewing my previous lessons probably every day, just because that's good practice. 
we talk about what we do continuously. So when there's a Christmas break, <coughs> yeah, do I spend a day or two looking back? Yep. But over the weekend, I don't I don't teach any differently on Monday than I would on Friday. I we catch up. We review. We whatever has to happen that day happens. One part of the shot here. What we have is a situation that uh, we're having a hard time finding consensus on in the communities. We've got five people from our communities who have agreed, because of their interest in kids and education, to serve the district on the Board of Education. We've elected these people to do that job. Uh, I know them all well enough to know that they're working hard at that job, uh, for which there is a very little remuneration. And uh, they double their salary every year, still doesn't make that much difference. But if we can't trust these people who have hired a staff of administrators, uh, an excellent teaching staff, in my opinion, to do the job, what do we do? If we can't all run this thing as we want it individually, we can't all, every time the board has a decision to make, want to put it to a public vote. We can give them our opinion, but then we've got to butt out and let them do their job, in my opinion. Chuck, I think that was well said, and, and you know, I don't know how you guys feel right now about us five board members, but I will tell you that each one of us cares about kids. And, and I'll tell you that I have four kids in the school right now, and I have to set aside what's best for my kids and worry about what's best for everybody's kids. And I'm willing to do that. And all of these, all four of these other guys are willing to do the same thing. So if you guys are sitting there thinking that we enjoy what we're doing right now, Obviously, we don't. We have a very difficult decision to make, and we're trying to make the best decision for the kids. We understand that it's not gonna make everybody happy. We understand that. <coughs> but, uh, Gene doesn't think this is true, but there are some people that are happy about it. There are. So, unless there are any new comments, uh, I'm gonna, mm -hmm ask for a vote to end the, the public hearing and uh, Curtis go ahead. Could you indicate please by what day you have to have this calendar voted on and passed? I don't think there is a day right now. It's, it's due with the spring bids which I believe is due John you remember? June 15th I believe. June 15th. Is the calendar due, due June 15th or is it just the uh, Educational data survey they that rolled, indicates whether you'll have hours or days. They they rolled they they rolled the March first deadline in to be part of the spring beds reporting, so it's one and the same. The spring beds record reporting was to indicate to the DE whether you're going to go with hours or days. Is that accurate? I believe it is, Curtis. Is it also accurate that that isn't um, to indicate the final form of the school calendar? First time through, so I don't know if I can give you a straight answer on that Curtis, one. the spring beds, basic educational data survey, encompasses a lot of things. We send our whole student database there, okay? Um, Fair enough. I'd have to, I don't, I don't even do it all, so I can't even answer the question. But it's way more than just a calendar. So, okay. it, now, the it, calendar used to be due in the spring, March. March 1. March 1, or whatever. With, well, with the new legislation, they made the due date the same date as the spring beds. June 15th. Okay. So it's, so it's accurate that you do not have to decide tonight on the final form of the calendar. In <coughs> fact, have until June 15th. Thank you.
And a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify.